With David Hall, we had a look at her coming into the mounting yard and we both went, wow. Yep, she looks fantastic. Hasn't taken any harm from her race on Saturday. 50 kilos, very well weighted. Meets a lot of these better at the weights as well. She'll be extremely hard to beat here. So there's the figures for Charm Scene Lamb. Let's have a look at the figures for Far Rain. This is all important as we look at her. She's going up to the gates at $1.90 and she has trimmed up a little bit. She looks superb. Jen, you've gone for a bit of value. I'll just do that, Peter. I'll go for number five, Dantela, but she's going to be so hard to beat. Number 10, Far Rain, from number one to Lido. Far rain for me. They're heading up to the gates for the second of the features. The Group 2 Emirates Classic, the 92nd of the series. We'll be back to watch them fly down the famous 1200 metre course after this. To the Goodyear blimp. We have the best seat in the house there for the 1200 metre start at Flemington, providing some magnificent pictures here today. And up the top of the famous straight course, they are moving in for the Emirates Classic. We've got a field of only eight with the scratchings of Fapiano's son and Cullen. Let's get the thoughts for the last time today, courtesy of Sport 927 of Roy Higgins. Thanks, Pete. Well, I must say, I was. I was greatly taken by the look of the 10, the filly, far rain. I've marked her as a three-year-old colt. That's exactly what she looks at. Yeah. She's a stunning big filly. I marked her on top of another three-year-old in number six, Spargo. By oh, gee, this horse has done well. He looked outstanding in the yard. Look for a big run from him. The toppy Toledo most certainly goes in. He is now peaked. He's ready. And five, Dantela. It's probably been a little disappointing, although she missed the start of last show, her last race. But uh, she gets a chance here. Ten, six, one, and five. Look forward to seeing you on Saturday, Roy. Look forward to it, Pete. Roy Higgins joining us, and from the big strapping filly Far Rain to the big strapping colt, Tim Gossage in the betting ring. Far Rain is now into the red, Peter. They bet one dollar for dollar. It is now a long odds on favourite. The only one they've backed to bet it, Dantela, number five. And many of those dollars would have gone on because of her appearance. She looks fantastic. They're just about right. Gary, she looked a picture. She looks absolutely beautiful. What I did like to look at was number nine, Chain Seam Land, and the one, Toledo. They're just about pretty right, and they'll go pretty quick in this. Racing in the Group 2 Emirates Classic. Dandela won the jump away today. She's going straight to the outside rail. They all will, in fact. And it's Dandela from Toledo, Kidman's Cove, Mastic, Spargo, Far Rain. And then came uh, behind those runners, Flavor, just getting back towards the tail end. About 900 metres left to travel, and it's Dandela, about a length in front of Far Rain, two lengths to Kidman's Cove. Charm scene lad close, and so too Toledo, about four lengths off the leaders. They go past the 800. They were followed by Mastic and Flavor and Spargo at the tail end of the field. Onto the course proper, they head, and it's Dandela. Up against the outside rail in front of Far Rain, a length away. Followed by Charm Scene Land, Toledo, Kidman's Cave next from Spargo, then Mastic and Flavor. Towards the 400, it's Dandela and Far Rain. A length and a half away then to Kidman's Cove, Charm Scene Land and then Toledo. Far Rain's out after Dandela, two lengths to Charm Scene Land. Then Toledo and Kidman's Cove, it's Far Rain after Dandela, two to Charm Scene Land. Far Rain took the lead from Dandela, Charm Scene Land and then Mastic. It's Far Rain with 100 to go, getting a length in front of Dandela. Two away, Charm Scene Land, and the filly does it again, Far Rain. She might be the best sprinter in Australasia. She wins at two and a half lengths, second, Dandela, Charm Scene Land, third. Then came Mastic and Toledo, Kidman's Co, Flavor, and Spargo, 1.8.2 her time. <laughs> she's just something out of the box. So, honestly, she's almost as good a sprinting filly as I've ever seen. Well, she's right up with her, all the top ones I've seen, Dan. In one like, week, Gary. That's just right. In one week. Yes. And, wow. uh, you know, Brett Pebble just got a little bit worried there. He, uh, I think he thought he had a lot more there than what he, you know, but like to get past Dandelar. Dandelar there he actually played second in the new market. That's Jeez, right. Now, pass. here he is. You can see Brett, he's kidding a bit here. And Jimmy Cassidy starts to put a bit of pressure on Dandelar. And here's Brett. He's just got a feel for the stick. And he's just give her, well, he's really just waving it at her. He's give her one there, still waving it. Now he's put it away. And boy, look at that acceleration. She lengthens past Dandelow, it's a very good mare, oh, Charmsy yeah. Lynn stuck on. Mastic's run on for fourth, but it's amazing our class sprinters, how far from home they were off the bit chasing when Far Rain was still travelling and hadn't been let down. Oh, just incredible. Well, it's another treble, treble. He's done it again. What a carnival. What a carnival for any jockey to have the amount of wins that this uh, young fellow's had, Brett Preble, and uh, he's going to be associated with one of the best horses in Australia. And uh, David Hall again. Wow.
That's all I can say, Pete. Yes, uh, he just walked up to you. Your name is. Uh, <laughs> we don't know you, I don't think. <laughs> oh. I can't get it out. <laughs> Unbelievable, this filly. Yeah, look, it's pretty special, isn't it, to do what she's doing. Um, I suppose we had took a little bit of a risk to back her up in four days, but 50 kilos, and she just really loves this straight course. And, uh, you know, I, as soon as I saw her after Saturday, I knew I was going to back her up. I just had to take up that challenge, and uh, she's delivered the goods. She's, she's something special. If anything, I thought she probably looked better in the yard today than she did on Saturday. Peter, I, I tend to agree with you a little bit. I think she had a bit of a glow in her coat today. Um, you know, I don't know whether her, you know, facts and figures will be better than, than Saturday's run with the time and everything, but, uh, you know, to do what she's done as a three-year-old filly and, and back up after four days, she's, uh, she's extra special. We've decided not to give you the appearance money from Network 10 because we don't think you need it. <laughs> I'll take your job. Uh, no, that's <laughs> enough. You do what you do best. <laughs> David Hall, here's Brett Preble. Just got a bit of a problem with the microphone there, but we've heard from Brett a few times. I think Lexi's talked so much that he's broken the mic out there. And we might have another look at uh, a replay of this flying filly. She was travelling in the race. She actually got her head up a little bit just as they joined up with the course proper with about 600 to go. But there she is in the purple and green colours moving up inside Dantelo, which was hard up on the rail. And quite often, the horse that's hard up on the rail just has that guide and it's a bit of an advantage. But look at the way this filly lengthens when Brett Preble goes for her. She just finds that extra length that only really top-class racehorses can find. And what you have to keep in mind is that she is having her sixth start in a race today and she's won five of them. She is outstanding. Dan Maliki has labelled her perhaps the best sprinter in Australasia and I have no reason to disagree. We've seen a wonderful performance by the little filly in Far Rain taking out the Emirates Classic. We'll head to a break now and be back with the correct weight and the dividends after the running of race eight. We hope you're enjoying Network 10's coverage of Oak State from fabulous Flemington. There is a very excited, very happy bunch of connections. The owners of Far Rain, and my goodness me, they've got a very, very good one there. And look at that little twist of the whip around the fingers from Brett Preble. And that must be a very, very exciting feeling to sit on one that good, and she is special at Far Rain. All right. There's Damien. We're after correct weight from Des Gleeson. Here comes the way. Correct way. All right, dividends must be ready. Danny, she's a good in this one. Most certainly is, Tim. I think the highlight uh, of the carnival so far is this magnificent Philly Far Rain who pays $1.80 and $1.20, $1.80 for Dan Talar. The two ladies in the race have run one, two. Charm Scene Land, $3.50. Trifecta $80.80, the Quinella $5.30, Exactus $6.60, and the Race to Race Double paid $61.90. Well, everyone wanted to be on it today, Tim Gossage, Far Rain, so I'm sure the, the bookies uh, would be wanting to hide somewhere. Yeah, well, they were betting dollar for dollar for a while there, Dan, but they got absolutely smashed in the end. Just speaking to a couple of bookmakers then, said most of the business came on the phone, but Far Rain, one of the worst results for the carnival. This last, the last race, if you're not in front, coming to the last, good luck. It's a tough one, Peter Donegan. It is a very tough one, Tim Gossage, and you should be able to get each way odds the field here. Um, I think Palladium Star is probably going to start close to favourite here, Jen. Yes, I think so, and I think the pattern of racing too will suit Palladium Star for sure because he'll get back and he should be running on towards the end of the race. I've actually gone for number nine here, Atomic Man. Uh, that was before the, uh, the the way that they have been racing. A horse that does normally like to go up there, but I think the 1600 metres will suit anyway. Now, I thought a good value chance at around about 20 to 1. For number one, Ekalaka, and for third, I'll put in Palladium Star. So one, two, and seven are the main ones there with Palladium Star opening up the favourite at $3.60 and $2.20, and then we go over the page. And the one that Jen has suggested, Atomic Man, is very big odds, around about the $19 mark, Sterling Knight 12, Chief Red Eye 16, they are the main chances. 115,000 in the pool, remember that, because it's going to be a lot more than that by the time we come to the running of the final event. There are the selections from the panel, Atomic Man from Jen, Palladium Star from three of us, go with the flow, Ekalaka also get a mention. We'll be back with the presentation after the running of Race 8, and to congratulate the connections again of this flying filly far rain after this break on 10 around Australia. Earlier, we saw 
those happy connections with tributes win the Oaks. The filly wasn't too happy about having her photo taken, but this filly, she's going to have to get used to having her photo taken. She is a flying machine for the presentation after the Emirates Classic, the Vice Chairman of the VRC, Mr Rod Fitzroy. I've enjoyed the support of Emirates for the past three years at the Melbourne Cup Carnival, and with the support of races such as the Emirates Classic today at Group 2 level, and Emirates Stakes on final day at Group 1, they are certainly a most valued and major sponsor of the VRC. It is now my pleasure to introduce uh, Mr Eddie Lim, Area Manager Australia and New Zealand for Emirates, who will present the trophy to Mr Craig Hilly on behalf of the owners. Vice Chairman of the VRC, Rod Fitzroy there, handing over to Eddie Lim, who hands over the trophy in turn to the connections of that filly in Far Rain. And are they a happy lot of connections? I can tell you that they love that racehorse, and some of them even have colour coordinated dress with the horse's colours, which are green and purple. And Ray Poon is one of the owners, and he is a very colourful character, and we might be able to have a look at him in a minute, because he's got a purple jacket on, and the shoes, well, they are something to behold. There they are. Look at that. Colour coordinated. Now, that is taking it to new levels. Ray Poon, one of the part owners, and a very excited man he was too. First down to uh, congratulate David Hall. And uh, I don't too often head over and give racehorses a pat, mainly because I haven't got too much time, but I went over and gave this little filly a pat because I think we're going to be hearing a lot more of her during the autumn and uh, hopefully for a couple more seasons to come. She is, to borrow a phrase from a colleague of mine, something special. Last race, due at 4.45, the Women's Day Cup. And uh, here there are no scratchings, a field of 15 in the final event on the card. And we'll get the thoughts of uh, Jenny Chapman on the last. Uh, just confirming your trifecta selections there, Jen. Yes, I'm going for number nine, Atomic Man, for number one, Ekalaka, and number seven, Palladium Star in the last. And let's hope we can get out in the last. Yeah, let's hope we can. It's been a fairly tough day for the punters, but we've still got one to go. 4.45 is the starting time, so that is round about 22 minutes away from now. Timothy, we'll join you shortly before then. All right, Peter, how are those storm clouds looking, by the way? Well, actually, the storm clouds that we saw before over the city had headed away from us, and I don't know how Andrew Ramson, the chairman of the VRC, and mm. Brian Beattie, the chief executive, have pulled over the weather, but yeah. somehow they managed to divert the storm clouds around Flemington, and they just headed down towards the city and really haven't come over us. It's getting a little bit cooler now, Jen. We're getting a few little wispy clouds, but we're not going to get any yeah. rain during this race meeting, and that is fantastic. And uh, just looking back to race number six on the card too, by the way, tributes the winner. Return $7.10 and $2.20. My Sienna paid $1.40. Shizu third, $3.30. They were the super tap dividends for a dollar. Trifecta, $2.41.80. Cronella, $8.70. Exacta, $18.20. Running double, $26.70. And the Quadrilla, or the Quaddy as it's now called, here at uh, Flemington today on the numbers 8, 10, 18 and 10. 8, 10, 18 and 10 returned $1,870 even. So we hope you managed to snare it today. But if you didn't, there's always the last. There is, and we've got Saturday to come to too, so yeah. uh, hopefully we can recoup there too. Yeah, don't forget Emirates Stakes Day, and of course the Carnival continues uh, the week after that with the uh, Sandown Classic, which is a new race on the card worth $500,000. Wait for age, Tim. It is just a wonderful five or six weeks of racing here in Melbourne. Absolutely, no doubt about that, and uh, almost a guarantee of a crowd for the four days of over 300,000, which will be just extraordinary. Here's another member of our team who always has a ball during the four days, Lynn Talbot. I am having a ball, and there's a lot of other rowdy people having a ball down here in the members as well. It gets a bit scary at this end of the day, but holding herself up very high, very well, is current Miss Australia, Catherine Hay, looking delightful. What are you wearing today? Thanks, Lynn. A, a beautiful dress from Covers, which are a national sponsor, and some gorgeous jewellery from Precious Metals. We've got Ideal Cut jewels here, um, the diamonds, and they're looking fantastic. I've got quite a few comments from them for today. I can imagine. Now, you were crowned back in January this year as Miss Australia. I bet 1999 has been an extraordinary year for you so far. Well, I can honestly say the best year of my life. It's just been absolutely fantastic. The amount of people that I've met who are really genuine and devoted to their parents and, and their families with cerebral palsy, but also the places that I've got to go to and travel, it's just been amazing. 
Good on you. You are in fact the last working Miss Australia and also the first Miss Australia of Aboriginal heritage. Does that make it particularly special for you? Well it does. I mean Miss Australia already is very special but becoming the first from Aboriginal descent and being able to represent the Aboriginal community just means so much to me. Well after 46 years it'll all come to an end next year when next year's Miss Australia is crowned. No doubt a big party organised for that? Definitely. We've invited all past Miss Australias, all past title holders and anyone who's ever participated or had anything to do with the awards. So we all hope you come and celebrate with us a proud tradition. Wonderful. We'll enjoy your first Oaks Day here, Catherine Hay. Thanks very much, Lynn. Yes, the fashions are hot, the weather's a little warm, plenty of cool drinks though, so it's not a drama. Oaks Day, 99, come back on the other side of these. Welcome back everyone to Oaks Day of 1999 at the magnificent Flemington Racecourse and everyone just having a ball and as Peter said, sun's back out again and the storm seems to have travelled right around us and that'd be typical for the VRC this week. They are having a stunning week and as I said a crowd I would imagine well in excess of 300,000 by the time we're on the end of Saturday and Emirates Stakes Day. Well, Ed Phillips joined us today. You know, when you win a race during a, a, a carnival like this, it's all very glamorous in front of the members, but here's the bloke that really looks after the horse day in, day out, the strapper. Well, we've seen the big race. We've heard the presentations, the speeches. This is what the winner does, just to wind down. She gets a little bath, and as you can see, she's got her little bathroom slippers on there. And cleaning up the winner who's just cleaned up three hundred and twenty-five odd thousand dollars. Clint is the strapper, mate. How many hours a day would you spend with the uh, the horse? Uh, probably about two in the morning and, yes. and uh, one and a half and two hours at night. So it's just like a pet for you, really. Yeah, You'd well, spend more yeah. time than with maybe your girlfriend. Yeah. Have you got a girlfriend? Yeah, I do. All right then. Well, I was going to say, if you don't, there's plenty out here. Uh, so, uh, is this a big thrill for you, Tom? I mean, all, obviously the owners are pretty happy, but uh, you must get such a buzz as well. Yeah, this is our first time uh, strapping a Group 1 and I've won it. Yeah? So, yeah, it's a big thrill. Maybe buzz. the first of many for you? Yeah, hopefully. All right, uh, you missed a bit just under the uh, fetlock. Is that what it's called? Uh, she's showering. Look, we really shouldn't watch. Back to you. No, and you shouldn't say things like that because Wayne Hawkes is here and he, he's looking after the horse, all right? Yeah, he's doing a spot on job. <laughs> In fact, you wanted to say, uh, Wayne, of course, uh, part of the team that trained uh, that magnificent, and she did, magnificent tributes, eh? Yeah, she Fantastic. Can tell you. you want to thank all the staff right around Australia? Well, it is. I mean, at the end of the day, it's sort of a, a team effort, and uh, and that's what it all is. I mean, the horse has been in Melbourne. She's spelled in Melbourne before. She's yeah. uh, been back to Sydney, and she's came back through to Melbourne. So, I mean, people all around Australia, Peter Snowden, my father's foreman in Sydney, and uh, everyone down the people in the office, all the behind the scenes people. I know they're all at, uh, they should all be working, but uh, <laughs> I, hope they, I hope they all are. But uh, everyone, it's a team effort, and it's not just John Hawks, and he'll be the first one to tell you that. Absolutely true. Well, uh, he was a bit more colourful in his language language but uh, you've had a lean-ish time and it's nice to take out the Oaks when you've had a time like that. It is you know I mean I, I just said before it's just you know we, we, we started the spring off with sort of commands and uh, mm. a line dangerous even arena has been very disappointing I mean we had some really really good horses coming in the spring and we thought it was going to be our best spring ever and uh, it's amazing how this uh, this game is a great leveler isn't it, it just you know absolutely can bring you right back to earth mm. can't it well it certainly did Let's have a look at the race because um, my Sienna uh, was travelling very well at this stage and uh, you watch the Gouch bring uh, tributes up on the outside and uh, at this stage were you feeling pretty good? Yeah, she was going really good. You can just see there where Darren's got a stick in the left hand and she was sort of wanting to get in, uh, you know, get in really close to uh, the second horse, My Sienna, but Darren did a good job. He flicked the whip across there and uh, gave a few around the backside to keep her mind on the job. And she's only, she's only a lightly race filly. She's very wayward and still does a lot wrong, but it was a, well, it was a, uh, you know, it was a true, uh, true staying test today and she was just too good on the line. You say lightly raced and uh, that's a subject that's brought up a lot and it obviously benefits her. Uh, and sometimes a trainer makes a decision to race a horse like we've just heard Far Rain has raced four days apart. Sure. I mean, it's a juggling act. Well, it is. Depends you know. on the horse. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, you know, the Oaks has just been run and won, and, uh, you know, John Hawkes ten minutes ago was talking about what he's going to what he's gonna do with her in the autumn. I mean, the spring's not even yeah. finished yet, and uh, she's going to the paddock next... Uh, she'll be on the float back to Sydney next Tuesday night, and he'll have already worked out before she's left mm. Melbourne how long uh, she's going to have in the paddock and where she's going to have her first up run, so it doesn't take long to come around. You saw the big reaction from Darren Gouchy when he went past the, uh, the winning post, and it is nice, and I think I said it a while ago, if you've been having a lean trot, 
and uh, a few people have had a go at him. Uh, it's nice to get a winner like that and say, well, it's, you know, I'm all right, I can ride. Well, it is. And I mean, look, to be honest, Darren hasn't done a thing wrong this, no. this carnival. He's been riding perfectly. And probably to be honest, I mean, probably maybe Darren's bit of a downfall was being loyal. And he's been loyal to sort of John Hawks and Jack and Bob Ingham. And, uh, and it sort of cost him some rides. He did jump off a of Rogan Josh. He could have yeah. ridden a My Sienna or a Wakeful mm. Stakes. And these are all the things that people don't realise and don't mm. understand. And because he'd been loyal to us and we hadn't been having a good time, well, he's missed out on some pretty good races. I'm not saying he would have won the Melbourne Cup on Rogan Josh, but there's always the question of, uh, you know, the one that might have got away. So it was great for Darren and showed his emotion there. I think he nearly fell off the horse. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he did. He went past the line, yeah, but still, it's his day, so he can Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well done. Thank you. Uh, it must make you feel good. And of course, not over yet. Got no, another it's not. Uh, Got another day to go. Exactly. We've got to get past tonight first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank good you. Good to talk to you. Uh, Wayne Hawke's joining us there. Here's just a couple of things coming up on Network Tenji. We're going to be busy over the next little while, but the first thing that's coming up, of course, is uh, Rally Australia. And on Emirates Stake Day, Stakes Day, we hope to be uh, crossing to Bill Woods as we did last year. Uh, that's on uh, Sunday from 1 through 5. And of course, the real big one, the FAI 1000 from uh, 12 to 5 on Saturday, November 13, weekend after this. And then on Sunday, it's huge. It goes all day, from 7 o'clock in the morning right through to 5 o'clock. You will see literally everything on the home of motorsport, Network 10. And of course, after that, Peter Donegan and I saddle up for three golf tournaments before Christmas as well. So that's the only way we like it, PD, I think. Yeah, looking forward to getting over there to Kuyonga for the uh, Ford yeah. South Australian Open again. And uh, terrific tournament last year, Tim. We saw so many debut winners on the circuit last year, and I think it's going to be another great season of golf here in Australia. But that's in the future. Yes. In the immediate future is the last race, the Women's Day Handicap. As Tim Gossage said before, Jen, if you're losing coming to this, good luck. But I just went to the loo before, and a bloke in the loo tipped me Palladium Star. Well, Palladium does look extremely hard to beat here and looks terrific in the mounting out as well, I might add. Let's have a look from the top. Number one, Ekalaka. Jason Patton, the rider for Brian Cox. Nicely drawn. Alley number one. He didn't have any luck there at Mooney Valley. I'd forgive him for his last run. He's a very honest type of racehorse. He's drawn him one. I think he might get a nice run. It just depends on what happens there. I think the swoopers, you know, towards the end will be running on. Here's a chance, though. Go with the flow will be one of those swoopers. It's swooped home at Mooney Valley. Surprised a few when winning at 16-1. to 1. Here's this man again, Brett Preble riding for Dean Saxon this time. He won this race last... Oh, sorry. He, no, he didn't. He ran second in this race last year. And uh, he did carry four kilos less there. But on an enough type of racehorse, I'd say a place chance for the go with the flow. We were talking about golf before, and uh, Wayne Grady, currently known as Grades, will be with us this year. And here's our Grades. Darren Gauchy is the rider for David Rakavolos at Mornington. Well, when you're back our Grades, you've got to expect to miss the start because that's what he does normally in every race. Uh, not a lot of luck in the Seymour Cup at his last start. And uh, it was a good win the start before Cranbourne. So there was some chance. He'll be running on. That's, Gold, that's in his favour. Gold Road number five won the Bairnsdale Cup two runs ago. Norman Weymouth is the rider here for Doug Dowler at Pakenham. He's uh, a better horse on top of the ground. He's got that here today. Um, I thought he had every chance there at Sandown, but the track was slow. So on top of the ground, he comes back into it. Let's have a look at this horse, Palladium Star number seven. Gary Palmer is the rider for Guy Walter. And uh, we're actually on to number nine, Atomic Man. So we'll come back to number seven. But first of all, Atomic Man, the one you like in the race. Well, yes, uh, Atomic Man. I thought he had every chance there at Werribee, but just might have needed that run. He strips a fitter horse going into this. He is a city winner. I just thought at the value, he's uh, he's very good value, around about 18, 20 to 1. Number 10 is Sterling Knight. Gary Murphy is the rider, and this horse finished third behind Go With The Flow in that race at Mooney Valley last so, start. Yeah, he's only had 13 starts, and his record is pretty good, Pete, having won five of those and a few placings there as well. Very honest type of performer. Every chance there at Mooney Valley. I'll give him a place chance in this. Number 11, Chief Red Eye. Craig Williams takes the set for Kevin Bodie at Cranbourne. Um, a horse that comes into this race around about 16 to 1, Peter. Now, um, he ran third behind Palladium Star. Did have every chance there, but Palladium Star is about 2 to 1, and this horse is about 16 to 1, so maybe a place chance. Let's go back and see if we can have a look at number 7, Palladium Star, because it is one of the favourites, and there it is. Looks particularly well to Gary Palmer, the rider for Guy Walter. He was well backed at Geelong, and uh, on that occasion, he did weave his way through, and uh, he ran out. Did a little bit wrong, but he did look impressive, and I think he's going to be hard to beat. You can see he's yeah. starting to sweat up now. He is sweating up a little bit as they go to the gates. So what was your trifecta in the last? Well, I'll go with number nine, Atomic Man, from number one, Ekalaka, and number seven, Palladium Star. Palladium Star for me, but we'll keep an eye on that situation and see how he is when he gets to the gates for this, the last, the Women's State Cup, over 1,600 metres. 4.45 the starting time is round about seven minutes away from now, so why don't we have a look at the tote figures? 
Williams as they go to the gates, and Dan Malicki is the man to do that with us. Another open race with uh, Palladium Star 260. If you can get at that problem of hanging, well, he could be anything, Palladium Star, but he, he's a solid enough favourite. Uh, 640 Ekalaka, 560 for go with the flow. Uh, seemingly the main chances. And you've got a host of other runners just outside the, that range with our grades at $10. And on the second page, horses like Atomic Man, Sterling Knight, Chief Red Eye, and Henty Lane, all given chances. Henty Lane having firmed in some $2.70. So that's the look on the tote. Palladium start, $2.60 has winning form, but wayward ways, Tim. It certainly does, Dan, but uh, it's got the drift at the moment. It has opened up clear cut favourite. It's the only one that really started favourite here in the bookmakers ring. Bit of money for the top weight, Eka Laka. And uh, Pete Donegan, I must have gone to a different toilet than you because a different guy came up with my coat and said, Henty Lane at each way odds. And before I go, Peter, our lucky punter for the day has had $50,000 to bet with Darwin All Sports. Has had his last $5,000 on the favourite in this, and that is Palladium Star for wins. He ends up in front for the day. Thank you, Tim Gossage. There is the map over 1,600 metres this Women's Day Cup, and uh, it'll go in round about six minutes from now. And taking a look at the selections, Palladium Star from Let's See Myself and Gary Willits, Atomic Man from Jenny. Go with the flow from Richard Friedman, Ekalaka from Dan Maliki. And as they go to the gates now, I'm happy to say that I've been joined by Bob Cameron, who's the editor-in-chief of Women's Day. Bob, nice to see you here at the oh, races. What a just, day. Oh, it's just wonderful to be here. I've come down from Sydney, and it seems like a Sydney day down here. Sorry about that, but... Uh, what a, what... It hasn't stopped raining up there. Yeah, I know. What do I say? <laughs> uh, we need it. We need it. Yeah, uh, especially our water up there. Um, yeah, it's been a wonderful day. What a wonderful crowd here, and a beautiful crowd. And it's uh, been a great, great race day. And... It's true to be here representing Women's Day and the Women's Day Cup. Uh, it's been a great uh, year for horses with Women's Day because um, I don't know whether you remember, uh, tick I'm sure you do, TikTok, uh, the Barcelona yes. Olympics. Yeah. We brought TikTok back from uh, uh, retirement in England to come and sp uh, spend its uh, final days over here in Australia. And it's now travelling around around the country. Um, yeah, so lots of fans uh, you know, from the Olympics remember him. Well, I don't know what sort of a tipster you are. Have you got us uh, got well, one for us in the line? Well, terribly, I've... Um, I, 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 I got myself a tri trifecta sorted out, and um, I went and left my, uh, <laughs> my my ticket up on the table back at the Women's Day Pavilion. That's not a good idea. Oh, no, it's just terrible. I think everyone's le leapt on it. Um, yeah, well... Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll tip yeah. you one. Okay, Palladium go on. star number seven. Yeah, that wasn't one of mine, but uh, I'll, go, I'll now rush off and uh, put some money on it, shall I? Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Bye-bye. They're going to the stalls now for the last, and we'll be back with the Women's Day Cup after this break. The final race of the day on Oaks Day, and you're watching it live around Australia on Network 10. Hope you're back in the winner. From the Goodyear Blimp, we're looking down at the 1400 metre start for the 1600 metre start, I should say, for the running of the final event. The Women's Day Cup over on the far side, the Goodyear Blimp providing some spectacular pictures as two of those barrier shots been today. Hope you've enjoyed Oaks Day. Don't forget Emirates Stakes Day coming up on Saturday. Gary, what did you like quickly? Well, I like Go With The Flow from Palladium Star and number one, El Calaca. Last event, the Women's Day Cup over 1,600 metres. Last one up will be our grades with Darren Gauchi, who won the Oaks with tributes. The favourite Palladium star. Colours to look for, red, white stars, dark blue sleeves with a white cap. All locked away, and they're racing. Henny Lane jump well, missing at our grades. May have been intentional, though. Go with the flow and recommittal, settling towards the tail end. Palladium Star handy in the early part of the race, and White Out Norway Star, one of the bolters, is whipping across now.